Hello, this is Ben Hearn again, and I'm doing another market watch for Marion Station for the month of November. Uh, if you got my email last month, I did the same thing. This month it's gonna be uh, as well the same thing. It is a collection of homes that I put together and I'm gonna share my screen and you're gonna be able to see them and it's completely like interactive and I'll have a link for that in the email. So you'll be able to check it out if you want. Uh, and it's shareable. So if you have friends or family that are interested in Marion Station, then you can share it with them. They can check everything out as well. Then also, if you are interested in other areas, I can send you uh, the same thing or something similar. So you can get like updates in real time about homes that you know are newly active or that are sold and pretty much like any town around here, uh, I'll be able to set you up with. So before I share my screen and show you that, I wanted to kind of go through the numbers, I guess, of Marion Station the past like year plus of how many homes that have been selling and are listing because, you know, there's not that many. All right, so this is basically shows all the closed sales, orange, the new pendings, light blue. That's when a seller accepts an offer. Um, and they go through inspections sometimes. And then new listings, dark blue. So historically, like the spring market is the busiest market for real estate. Summer dies down with people going on vacation. Fall picks back up a little bit. And then winter, it really dies off because the holidays and people just don't want to go outside because it's quite cold. But you can see, you know, July 2020, August 2020, there was a whole lot of activity like everything around that time, uh, take that with a grain of salt because you know, the pandemic kind of pushed everything back a little bit. So those people who might've been moving you know, earlier had to wait till then. But you can see that last fall, it was still pretty decently active. Um, died down a bit in this winter, then picked back up in the spring. And then this summer, it just, <laughs> it fell off a cliff uh, in August. So in August, there was five closed sales, three new pendings, and three new listings. September picked back up. And then October, boom, fell off a cliff again. Three closed, six pending, and four new listings. We don't have these metrics for November yet. They come out at the uh, mid, like the 15th of every month. But November is going to tell like a similar story. There's not really any pendings, um, just a few actives. And then there were more closed sales, I think like six, maybe seven. So anyway, long story short, it's a great time to list your house right now because there's not much competition uh, at all. And then something everyone's been hearing is like, you know, the prices of homes are so high that it's a hard time to buy. And that's true. They have dropped like a bit from like the craziness that was this summer and whatnot. But the mortgage rates are still low. As long as the mortgage rates are low, you can afford, your monthly payments are gonna be the same for a higher house. So a rule of thumb is that each 1% in mortgage rate equals 10% in buying power. That is that if, I should probably stop sharing my screen for this. All right, so if you buy a home for $500,000 and you get a 4% mortgage rate for that, your monthly payments are going to be the same as if you bought a home for five hundred fifty thousand with a three percent mortgage rate. So that you know that's that ten percent, that extra fifty k, because the mortgage rates are different. So the mortgage rates are the name of the game right now. They're still low. Uh, they're a little above three now, um, depending on your lender. So as long as they're low, then it's your monthly payments are kind of same as if you bought a, a cheaper house with a higher mortgage. So I'm gonna go share my screen again. Sorry for that little change up. Now I'll take you to the collection. Um, so again, this, there is a link for this in the email. You can fully interact with all the homes and then you can share this if you want. So these three homes right here, these are all active. They actually did not have any activity last month but because there was just not many homes total, I wanted to include them. As you can see, there was just 11 total. So yeah, these three homes, they've been on the market for a bit. Um, and Prescott, by the way, Prescott. So again, you can go through all the pictures. 
So this home was on the market. Let's see, we can go to property history. You can see in September it was listed at 1.3, then they took it off. And then November, they put it back on for 1.2. Uh, and again, all the stuff that I'm doing on the screen, you can do too with this link. So you can go through all the pictures and see all the information about it. Um, so that's it for the actives. There's just four actives and there's no under contract or pending homes. So there's just a dearth of inventory. So that one closed in November. Uh, 338 Winding Way is closed at the start of the month for 865. And if you click it, it shows you what it percentage it closed for. So this one sold 3.8% below asking, which at you know, it does happen. People have heard in this market, everything goes over, it's a lot go over, but some do end up going under. So this one was listed uh, originally at 899, then 875, and then 865. And you can see that's out on the market for 34 days. Generally, the longer it sits on the market, the more likely it is to sell for less, but not always, as you'll see. 230 Valley Road sold for 1185. That one was listed at 1185. And so that's just sold right on the, the money. And I think that was only on the market just for a couple of days per week, uh, which, you know, seems to be the standard these days. Homes don't really last too long uh, on the market. So 514 Mercer closed for 808. That was up from 799. Yeah, like right above asking, that only lasted a day on the market. Uh, 509 Latimer, that closed for 775. And this one was again, right on the money, I think. And that sat for a bit. So, I mean, it does happen. It's, you know, it'll be sitting and then all of a sudden two or three buyers get interested at the same time. I don't know how. Uh, and then it still gets the asking price. 326 Woodley, so. This one sold 13% above asking, which is quite a lot. So it was listed at 599 and then it sold for 680. So that really underscores how important setting a good listing price is. You know, usually you think like, all right, let's set it the highest, it might come down a little bit. But if you set a good price or even like a slightly below market price, then you get a bunch of buyers. One of those buyers is gonna send in a crazy offer potentially, and then you get you know, really above asking, maybe they waive inspections. Um, and that's just an example of that in real time happening. Uh, then lastly, we had another condo that sold for 392. So as you can see, there, you know, there weren't that many, there were like eight homes that closed. Um, there's still four active and that's about it. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. So yeah, Marion Station, there's just not a lot of activity. I expect the holidays coming up, it's probably, you know, same old story once again. Um, as always, if you have any real estate questions or just like opinions about something, feel free to ask. And if you like are thinking of selling or buying or, you know, you don't really know what to do, uh, please reach out, I'm happy to be a resource. And this video is on YouTube. And I would greatly appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube. Um, it would help me out. If not, you know, no worries. And that's about it. All right. Have a good one. Thanks.